Hello, hello. Welcome to screencast number two of the Mix and Flow of Matter unit. Uh, last screencast, we defined what a fluid was, and we talked about how we use fluids. Now, in this unit, we talk a lot about matter. And what is matter? No matter. <laughs> Simpsons joke. Uh, what matter is and how we define matter and what it looks like. So let's go start at the very kind of foundation of things and define a few things. Okay. So firstly, uh, when we have uh, something, it's going to be classified usually into one of two things. It's going to be either something called a pure substance or it's going to be a mixture. Now, a pure substance is made up of only one kind of substance or material. This is sugar or aluminum foil or sulfur or water. It can't really be broken down into anything else. Okay? It is as it is as it is. That's how it exists. Whereas a mixture is made up of a combination of different substances, each keeping its own properties. I think of a bag of mixed vegetables or a salad. Okay, each Those bag of mixed vegetables and salad have its own individual parts, and I can pick out the parts if I want to. And each part contains its own special property. Okay, Pop is another good example. Soda pop, fountain pop, whatever you want to think of. So we have all matter being classified as either a pure substance or as a mixture. Now, we can actually uh, use something called chromatography to determine whether a substance is a pure substance or a mixture. Okay? It, uh, it takes place by taking filter paper and putting like dots of this uh, substance. Let's say it's a marker, for example. Putting dots on the filter paper and uh, putting just the tip of the filter paper inside of a solvent, which, which can be water or other things. Okay? And as the water travels up the filter paper, okay, if it's a pure substance, the f the 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 marker won't won't really move up the water up the up the uh, filter paper. If it's a mixture, though, we get this nice blend of different colors all the way up. What's called the chromatogram. Okay, it just travels all the way up, and we see all the different colors within the substance. You know, what is chromatography used for? Well, it's used for uh, medical and biomedical research where they look at uh, pharmaceuticals. They want to know what's in something. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Forensic scientists use chromatography quite a bit. Um, they are used in space-related and geochemical research and development when they want to know if something's coming from a pure substance or if something's a mixture. It's used in the oil industry. Environmental monitoring, right? What's in the water? Is it is it pure water? Is there something in it? And investigation of chemistry and biological systems. So we use this process of separating between a pure substance and a mixture quite frequently. And it's actually quite cool process, chromatography. Now, if everything is divided as a pure substance or a mixture, that means that if we have a pure substance, that's it. There's nothing more we can do with it. However, if it's a mixture, it contains different parts. And there's actually different kinds of mixtures as well that we can look at that, that uh, define different types of mixtures in general. So first we have a mechanical mixture. And a mechanical mixture is a mixture where you can see all the parts that make up that mixture. Salad, soil, fruit loops, uh, lucky charms. I can see all the parts and I can pick them out if I need to. Uh, just side note here. Pay attention to this word here, heterogeneous. We'll come back to that in a second. Something called a solution. A solution looks as if it's all one substance. and You can't see the parts that make up the mixture, though. Solution would be like Kool-Aid or vinegar. Okay, You know it's made up of different things. You just can't see it. Side note, homogeneous mixture. Remember that. We'll come back to that. Suspension. A suspension is a cloudy mixture in which droplets of one substance are held within another substance, kind of like muddy water, and eventually one substance will settle out or separate from the other. Uh, a vinaigrette, like salad vinaigrette dressing, or tomato juice, great examples of suspensions. Or muddy, muddy sandy water is a great example too. You let it sit long enough, you're going to have layers. And the last one, more difficult to kind of imagine, something called a colloid. It's a cloudy mixture uh, that has droplets of something inside of the, the main substance, but they don't separate out very easily. So those droplets just kind of hang around and just kind of sit there. An example that I would like to give for that would be a fog. Okay, you have droplets of water within the air and they, they can't really be separated out very easily. Milk, another great example of a colloid. Okay, So I want to come back to those two words that I told you remember, heter heterogeneous and homogeneous. Okay. A bit of a history on these words. Homogeneous 
comes from the Greek word homo, meaning same or similar, with the root part of it and genius meaning kind. So if we took that word into, into the original meanings, it means same kind. So heterogeneous, hetero coming from the Greek word meaning different, and then the root genius meaning kind. So we have different kind. Homogeneous, same kind. Heterogeneous, different kind. When we apply those to our fluids or our mixtures, we come up with this. A homogeneous mixture is made up of many parts, but no individual parts are visible. It looks like the same kind. It all looks like one, such as a solution. So the word solution and homogeneous are, are almost interchangeable. You could use them both in the same situation. Heterogeneous, made up of many parts and all the parts are visible. Remember, different kind. So heterogeneous and mechanical mixture both mean the same thing. Many parts, all visible. So we can kind of look at our all matter flow chart now. We can take a look at it as pure substance, just standing on its own. And then we have mixtures. We separate it into what we talked about before. I put suspensions and colloids together. Not that it really matters. Okay, And these look like this. All matter, uh, or sorry, mixtures or mechanical mixtures. There's some examples there. Solutions, examples there. And colloids and suspensions. There's some examples there as well. Okay, So that's it. That is the uh, division of matter in a nutshell. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it does not, by all means, come back and ask in class.